As European settlers populated North America, one of the most sought after features in the landscape was a waterfall, a place where moving water could be used to drive a water wheel. Water wheels convert energy from falling water into mechanical energy, energy that can be used to saw wood or grind grain. Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, water powered mills appeared wherever there was sufficient water flow. Most of the small mills are gone now, but many of the communities that started around them still exist. If a stream or a river flows through your community, chances are you had a water powered mill. The word mill in a street sign tells us there may have been a water powered mill in the community. Some exploration may even uncover some remains from those first mills. The remains of this grist mill can be found in Eganville, Ontario. These grist stones sit beside a dam in the forest. They came from Scotland in the mid 1800s. Powered by water, these stones rotated, grinding grain into flour. Evidence for these early mills can be found at thousands of sites throughout North America. Many of the mills with a significant water flow evolved to generate electricity. This mill in Eganville produces electricity for the community. Much of the electricity in the world is produced by falling water. This is a working replica of a water wheel. This small model produces electricity. If you have access to some basic tools and materials, it is not difficult to construct a water mill similar to this one. I'll show you how I constructed this model. The dimensions aren't critical. You can adapt this basic design to suit the materials you have available. I found some usable gears for this project in a Connex construction kit and the generator is a DC motor out of a battery operated model car. I created the main wheel from two 40 centimeter diameter circles cut from 3 8 inch plywood. A 12 centimeter radius circle on these pieces locates the paddles. I cut the paddles from thin aluminum, the type of material used as trim on houses. These pieces are 9 centimeters by 11 centimeters. I used 12 of these. These aluminum pieces are attached to wooden spacers. The spacers are 9 centimeters long, the inside width of the wheel. I use nails to attach the aluminum to the spacers. I cut and attached a small aluminum piece to the back of the paddle assembly to help hold water. I used hot glue to tack the paddles in place. Once they were all glued, I flipped the assembly over and screwed the paddles securely in position. When all paddles were attached to this side, I turned it over and attached the other side. I used 5 8 inch plywood to construct a frame to hold the wheel. The axle is a long threaded rod. The large gear attaches to the axle. We use gearing to increase the rate of rotation. The large yellow gear has 84 teeth. We will be attaching a smaller gear to the generator. This small gear has 14 teeth. This gives us a ratio of 6 to 1. Every turn of the water wheel will produce 6 turns of the small gear. The small gear attaches to the generator shaft. I mentioned that the generator is a battery operated motor. Most DC motors will operate as a generator. When I spin the shaft, the LED lights. The motor is attached to the frame with the gears aligned.
Unfortunately, when I spin the wheel, we get a very low voltage output from our generator. We need to increase its rate of rotation. We need more gears. I have attached a small gear to a large one on the same shaft. This set of gears also has a tooth ratio of 6. Now our gear ratio has increased to 6 times 6. Every turn of the water wheel will produce 36 turns on the generator shaft. This increased rate of rotation has increased the voltage output of our system. I used the garden hose to test the wheel with water. Next I set up a pipe. This creates a head race, a channel delivering water to the wheel. The water exiting from the mill travels in a tail race. A wheel configured like this, with the water coming in at the top, is called an overshot water wheel. We have a small waterfall on our property. I was able to direct water from this stream onto the wheel but we didn't have enough head to use the full wheel, so this configuration has water coming in about halfway up the wheel, making this system a breast shot water wheel. This model water wheel is producing electricity. It is possible to calculate the power output of a system like this by connecting a load, like a power resistor, and measuring the current produced. This system could also be adapted to run a tiny cutoff saw by adding a crankshaft to the wheel. There are a number of water mills in North America still operating. These grist and saw mills are usually part of a Pioneer Village exhibit and certainly worth visiting. For more science and technology related videos and projects, visit our website, hyloroad.com.